Okay, so you invested in a financial product, say a bond or an SDI, at an impressive 11.75% interest rate. You get all the repayments on time and you get the exact amount as promised by the platform. But when you calculate the net returns or the net gains, you find that you got just around 8.17%. So how did this happen? Is the platform lying or was your calculation incorrect? The answer is none of the above. You were actually using wrong measurement to understand your gains. And this is where the difference between XIRR and CAGR becomes so important. In this video, I'll try to explain the difference between both of these using real world examples in as simple manner as possible so that you understand which one to use, where and how. So coming to our original example, I have pre-populated the sheet, uh, but you can check this is a functional sheet. If I change the data here, it will change the values as well, right? So yes, it is a functional sheet. And uh, I'll check the sanity of this sheet from an another uh, calculator present online as well at the end of the video. So we will be able to check whether the sheet is actually performing the calculations correctly or not. So these are the data. Uh, I have taken it from here 7470.18 and 7923.41 exactly. right? And uh, I have taken this nine months from here. Though it is not exactly nine months, today is 25th of July and the last prepayment we are getting on 7th May. So it is slightly less than that. So even if we take this as 8, okay, even then it is far lower than 11.75 that is being promised. So how do we reach this number? To reach this number, we will have to use XIRR. Once again, I have pre-populated the uh, data here as well. From these, you can check it here. It is 212.86 plus 2500 as shown here and similarly for other as well. So I have pre-populated them and you can see that the XIRR is exactly or even slightly more what is being promised here. So with this example in our mind, let us try to understand basic characteristics and differences between CAGR versus XIRR. CAGR is used where the investment happens as a lump sum. It is invested once and it is taken out on maturity once, just like an FD. But if there are multiple transactions involved, just like the example we saw previously, or say an SIP or an EMI, then we use XIRR. The biggest difference between these two is that in case of an FD or a lump sum investment in equity, the compounding keeps on happening automatically. You don't need to monitor it or reinvest anything. But in case of fixed income instruments, where you keep on getting interest or principal regularly back to your account, then compounding does not happen automatically. In this case, you need to keep on reinvesting these amounts back to in some instrument so that compounding happens. That is why the net XIRR will always be different from net CAGR in case of fixed income instruments like bonds or SDIs. But in case of lump sum investments like FDs, CAGR is always equal to XIRR which means that CAGR is slightly simplistic form of calculating your returns and XIRR is slightly complicated or more advanced version. Let us take another example here, in this case for a lump sum investment. I am assuming 1 lakh rupees at the initial investment, a tenure of 12 months and let us take the final amount as 1 lakh 12,000. So this gives us net CAGR of 12%. Similarly coming to IRR, in order to get 12% XIRR after 12 months, this is 1st January 25 and this is 1st January 26, this will have to be 1,12,000 rupees. So this makes both of them as 12%. But if we add one repayment in between here, say at 1 July 2025, I get 1,000 rupees and at the repayment I get 1 lakh 11,000 rupees. Now my XIRR is increased because I received a repayment in between and in order to account for this cash flow, my final repayment has to be less than 1 lakh 12,000. It would be somewhere. So this repayment of 1,000 rupees on July 2025 reduced the net amount that I received in totality by 55 rupees. Here I received 1 lakh 11,945 while in this case I received 1 lakh 12,000 rupees. With this exact principle, XIRR works in SIP, SWP and EMIs as well. 
uh, I'm not going to explain that with an example because it will make the video just too long. If you want me to make a video on that as well, just write it down in the comments and I'd love to make another video. If you want to work your own numbers in this sheet, I'll link this sheet in the description. You can check it out there. There are a lot of good lump sum calculators out there in the market, but I'm yet to come across a good XIRR calculator and hence I made this for my own use. Another interesting fact that I wanted to share was about the yield of FDs. You may or may not know this, but when you invest in an FD, say at 10%, the net yield that you get is usually higher than 10%. You can check that in this calculator by Grow as well. I have taken the investment as 1 lakh rupees, rate of interest as 10% and period 1 year. And in lump sum calculator, I have the same data, but the net figure is different in both of these. You can see here. The reason behind this is that in FDs, your interest usually compounds at a quarterly rate. I was not aware of this little fact a couple of years ago and it was only when I started working on personal finance a little deeper, I came across this really interesting fact. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or queries about my personal finance or financial journey, feel free to drop a comment and I'd love to talk.